Moving on now, let's move to Uganda to meet an entrepreneur peddling bamboo bikes. Nordin Kazumu is offering Cycling Fan a cheaper and sturdier alternative to ordinary bikes with his brand of bicycles made from bamboo and recycled materials. The entrepreneur who sells his bikes in Uganda and other countries plans to also use his bicycles to promote ecotourism. <laughs> At a workshop in Uganda's capital, Kampala, Nordin Kasoma inspects handmade bicycles produced by his company. The entrepreneur found a way to recycle damaged steel bikes, replacing frames with bamboo ones and selling them on the market. Nordin learned to make bikes after training with American bike frame designer and manufacturer Craig Kalfi and watching tutorials on the internet. He says he wanted to make bikes that are cheaper and tougher than conventional brands available locally. When it comes to the bamboo bicycle and riding, especially on the off-road, it's really comfortable. One, bamboo is flexible. Due to that flexibility, it gives that kind of shock-absorbing property. When you're riding, especially on the off-roads, the bamboo itself tries to absorb the shocks that you're passing through, other than steel or aluminium. The bicycles cost between $350 to $450 each, depending on the size and design. Nordin mostly sells his bikes in Uganda, parts of East Africa, Europe and America. His business employs about 20 workers. He also has several young apprentices that he's teaching the unique production specifications of his bicycles. We get geometrical diagrams of different types of bikes and different sizes. Uh, we normally make mountain bikes, city bikes, and travel bikes, and then we have the road bikes, the racing bikes. So every type of bicycle has different geometry and different sizes. He says he chose to work with bamboo because it can be easily found in the country, grows fast, and can be sustainably harvested. The bicycles are growing in popularity and have featured in various tournaments. <laughs> I think it's a cheap, even a cheaper option because if you went through importing a, a carbon frame, the taxes and the like, you suddenly may buy two of these in the frame. Nordin is working on plans to expand his factory and promote bicycle tourism in the country, which is already a popular African tourist destination that boasts of game parks and other attractions. The EU is restating its commitment to ensuring that the 2019 general elections and especially the presidential election in Nigeria are free, fair and credible. The Deputy Chief Elections Observer for the European Union, Mrs. Hannah Roberts, maintains that the mission will deploy sufficient observers across the state for adequate coverage and appropriate reportage of developments during the exercise. Roberts was speaking at a meeting with Nigeria's main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party in Abuja. According to her, the delegation will also be meeting with other political parties and other political actors who have roles to play in the forthcoming elections. As you know very well, we have, we're invited here by INEC. We haven't just turned up and we can't uh, control anything or we, we don't have that mandate. Our mandate is to observe, to make recommendations and we'll be issuing statements from time to time, particularly after the election days and then at the end a final report with recommendations that we hope will be considered by the, by the Parliament, by INEC, by others, in order to make future elections even better. We will, of course, be meeting with a range of different people, so we'll meet with yourselves, of course, also with APC, with other contenders, and with the other stakeholders involved in the election. It's really important for us to meet with a variety of people to hear as many voices as we can. We'll then have our observers, as we've had in the past, spread around the country in different parts so they can see the ground reality of the election, not just what's happening here in the capital. And we'll have, as you mentioned, a chief observer coming in who will be here over the election, but also in advance of the election. 
Back here in Lagos, let's meet eight-year-old Arike Oluwashion, a pint-sized Nigerian shutterbug who is focused on a future in photography. She says she picked up a camera at age two and was hooked, and she wants to follow in her parents' footsteps one day and run her own studio. Eight-year-old Arike Oluwashion is out in her neighborhood in Lagos, Nigeria, taking photos of food vendors. She's working on a pictorial documentary about street food. Arike has been toying with cameras since she was a toddler and says she gets a surge of creativity each time she looks through her viewfinder. When I take the picture, it feels like something is coming into me. And I'm, in, and I'm getting more better and stronger. She gets offers to cover events every week for the novelty effect, but she says the quality of her images quickly earn her respect. Arike's popular love for photography began at the age of two when she received a toy camera in her gift pack after a birthday party. Her grandmother, who is also a photographer, saw how she handled the toy and decided to buy her the real thing. Arike's parents, both photographers, accompanied her to her shoot and helped her edit and print her selections. Her photos all tagged Arike Photography, but her parents say they only allow Arike to take on creative projects and manage a social media platform for her to post her work, all of which a considerable investment of time and money. Arike costs me nothing less than $2 million every year. Arike has a brand. Talk of the cameras, talk of the gadget, talk of the logistics, talk of so many things. Fine, people want to pay, but I don't want to put that prayer on her. True to form, Arike's favorite subject in school is arts and crafts, and she was the arts and creative personality of the year 2018 at the Nigerian Child Summit Awards. Still to come on the program. Our Africa Tech segment takes a look at technological trends expected in 2019. Please stay with us.